Thank you for joining our conversation today about OneDrive Basics. My name is Dr. Patrick Jones, used to be a teacher, administrator, director of technology, and currently director of cloud strategy. So OneDrive is definitely a resource I've been familiar with, and hopefully through our conversation today, we'll add with your familiarity with it as well. OneDrive is part of the Microsoft storage in their Microsoft 365 area. It's part of SharePoint in that SharePoint is everything in Microsoft that stores files. With OneDrive, the files are personal. So the rights for those documents in that location is tied to one person. With Microsoft Teams, that's also a SharePoint with a different look and that has rights based on the members of that group. And then you have SharePoint Online, which again, it's file storage, but it's generally for a larger scale, whether it's a department or an organization, and the rights can be shared amongst those guys in those departments. Today, we're gonna to be talking about OneDrive and how it is special for your use and your workflow. One thing you'll hear me talk about throughout today is single point of truth. Traditionally, in the past, when we had a document that we wanted to share out with other people for collaboration, we'd take that document and we would email a separate copy to several different people. They would take that copy, revise it, edit it, contribute to it, and then send it back. And the person who owned that document initially now has to compile all of those changes into that original document again, so that it can reflect all of the input. And sometimes things got lost. Now that things are in the cloud, the documents are stored in OneDrive and SharePoints, we have a single point of truth. Instead of sharing out the document with multiple copies, now we share the document to people and multiple people can access the same document at the same time making it the single point of truth. Those rights on who can access that document are all determined by the owner. And in a OneDrive scenario, that is the person who owns that document. It's only one person and they can determine who else can contribute to that document. 
So let's take a quick look at the OneDrive environment. So when you log in to your Microsoft 365 account, this is the main page. To access your OneDrive, use the nine dot menu up here and select OneDrive. This is the online cloud repository for all of your documents. You also see folders for desktop, documents, and pictures. When you have a OneDrive, those folder locations on your computer are backed up into your OneDrive so that if you have to go onto another computer, that can be there for you as well. It'll sync down from the cloud onto that new computer. Along the top, we see that we're in OneDrive, and we also see that we have the search area, and we can search for all files, or if we click the dropdown, my files, or within the whole organization. Now, I'm only gonna see the files that I have rights and access to. If it's something that's not been shared with me or I don't have access to it, I'm not going to find it. That's the security of Microsoft 365 and SharePoint in the cloud. I also have my settings bar. I click on that with the window that pops out. And I can see the OneDrive settings, any themes that I want, languages, dark mode, and I can change my password from this location. I can also see that it is me that is logged in. Along the left, we'll see the username, along with the My Files section, Recent Files, Shared Files. These are files that are either shared with you or shared by you to other people. And the Recycle Bin. You also have quick access to other SharePoint sites around you, whether it's Teams or SharePoint sites that you can click on to get there. You can add more places and you can create a shared library between you and other people. Again, an, a, a folder or location that you create and manage. You can own that. And then at the top here, you have the menu bar with many of the different functions and features that are available. And right now it's showing some, but if you highlight a document, it changes to reflect the new actions you can take, which is also synonymous with the three dot menu right here. You click on the three dot menu, you get those same options. So multiple different places for multiple different things. Now, it looks like I just got a Teams message from my boss. He's wanting that sentiment analysis report that I created a long time ago, but he hasn't mentioned it in a long time. So I actually just deleted that. So I'm going to go to my recycle bin because I stored it in my OneDrive. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to restore that sentiment analysis document. It's going to restore it back to the original location where it was housed before it was deleted. Now, I might not know where that's at. So if I come up here, I can search for sentiment analysis because I know what the name is and I can report on that. So it's very important when you're naming documents to name them something appropriate. So if you have to search for it, it's easier to find. Again, the search shows that sentiment analysis is located in my documents section. It was modified by me and it was modified last eight days ago. So that's the correct document. I was updating up until eight days and then deleted it. So that's a great job. Now you notice that I have that same three dot menu. And if I click on it, I get those same menu at the top from the same location, even though it's not the My Files section. Great. So now that I found the document, I want to share it with my boss so that way he has access to it. I'm not going to email it to him because that'll email a copy of it. And that's not the original point, single point of truth. So what I want to do is I want to share it. I can share it using that share icon up here at the top or in the three dot menu. I also have a share. When I click on that, it's going to give me options. Anyone with the link can edit it. I don't want that. I'm just sending it to the boss. So I'm going to say specific people, right? 
And I don't want him to edit it. I put a lot of work into this. I don't want it to get messed up by somebody who doesn't know what I did. So I'm going to just say they can view it. And to be even more secure, since there is some sensitive data in there, I'm going to block that download. So they can see my file, but they can't download it. And I apply it. Now, I'm going to send it to the boss. So I find it by searching them. And if it's somebody else that needs it outside the organization, I can add their email. Or if it's a group, I can add the group name. Right here, you can see that it's showing they can only view it. I'm going to type a message right here. And when I hit send, it's going to send an email to the boss with a link to this document. It's not going to copy that document as an attachment. It'll be a link. And that link will send them right to this location inside my OneDrive. When they open it, they're going to see my document because I gave them rights to see that. Let's just verify that. So I'm going to go back to my files. Oh, there's my sentiment analysis document. If I click on the three dot menu, I'm going to click on manage access because here I can also see and give sharing rights, but I can see who has the I, the document. There you go. So IT support has it right there. Can show who used this link. Right now, nobody has, so he hasn't opened it up yet. But if he did, it'll show that he actually viewed it. And once they click on that link, I'll get an email also that says that it was accessed. But when the time comes, I can also stop sharing this document from this location for manage access because maybe it's a temporary access that they need. They just need to see it real quick or want to provide some input, make sure I'm on progress. So at that point, I can stop sharing it. So that way the sensitivity doesn't go. Now, he won't be able to forward it to anybody because they do not specifically have rights to it. Only the people listed here can access this document. If they forward it on to somebody external from the organization, they're going to get a block that I, they don't have access to this. They can request access by clicking a link, but they won't be able to see it automatically. So good. So it's showing that it is shared with them. And that's what we wanted to do. Now, I also want to make sure that I sent them the right version, right? Because I did do some work on this and change it. Over. Hopefully I didn't mess it up. So in the three dot menu, we see version history in there. And what that's gonna do is show in a pop-up the different versions of that document that are available. But since there was only one, it's not showing up. So let's go over here and see version history just so I can show it. There we go. So this one was edited a couple times. And from here, say this was the one that kind of isn't the right version. I want to revert back to version two that was at this time. I can click that three dot menu and I can restore that version. And now we see that it restored it by me back to this version right here. Now, there's many different things you can do with your files that are in here as well. So from that pop up, if I look at my three dot menu, I can download it if I want to make a copy of it. I can delete it. I can move it and I can copy it. But maybe there's another version I want. There it is. There's the Word document. Three dot menu. And in here, I want to be able to open this. So it gives me the ability to open it in my browser. I can open it in the full Microsoft Word app because it's a Word document. Or from this spot here, I can actually open it in Immersive Reader. Now, Immersive Reader is a resource that's available in the cloud versions of Microsoft 365 that not many people are familiar with. So if I want to open that in Immersive Reader, what it does is it adapts that document to my learning styles. It gives me the ability to access it the way I need access to it. 
So it takes that text and it's not going to change the document. It's just going to change how it looks for me. And I can actually have it read to me. And I can adjust that if I need to. I can make it go faster and I can change the voice. Also in Immersive Reader, I have text preferences. And in the text preferences, I can make it larger. If I have visual acuity issues, I can increase the spacing, which it is, or decrease it. I can change the font. Also, there's times, such as some people with some reading disabilities like dyslexia, it makes it easier to read it with a darker background with the light text that pops up. And there's other options as well in there. I also have the ability to manage the grammar. I can have it broken up into syllables. I can see nouns, verbs, adjectives. It's all broken in there. And if I highlight it, I can actually show the labels to where it's showing that those are the nouns. And I have reading preferences for line focus. I can focus it down to just that line to make it easier. I have picture dictionary, picture dictionary enabled so that if I were to click on rabbit, it's showing me the rabbit. And I can click up here and it'll read it to me. I also have the ability, if I have language issues where English is a second language, I can scroll down to another language. And when I click on that same word, I can hear it in French. So I can adapt to my needs through the immersive reader. And then just by clicking the exit button, it takes me back. So that's a great feature that's available in the cloud that not many people are aware of, but it really helps with people as far as understanding what they need to know. So again, I can go back to my files and see all of my files. These are what I have. This is what's on my desktop shared across my documents and my pictures. Again, syncing from my computer up into the cloud. So if something happened to this computer and I logged in, everything that's in there will go back to those locations on the new computer. I can see my recent work, whether it's Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and PDFs, and filter that down if I need to. Or see all. And again, the shared. This is another area you can find out what has been shared by you with other people or shared with you for access. So those are great. You can also change the view. Right now, I've got it in the list view. I can make it a compact list, and it looks a lot like Windows Explorer. Or I can have a tiles view. And it actually gives previews of the documents in this location as well. Speaking of Windows Explorer, when I'm in OneDrive and I'm on my computer logged in, Windows Explorer mimics that. It syncs down to my computer the same information that is up in the cloud. And when I change one thing, it'll change over here as well, filtering down. If I share that document with somebody and make a change, it's going to make the change in the cloud and filter down to them as well. So Windows Explorer is a great complement for those that like the traditional access on the computer. You also have the ability to create new items inside your OneDrive online. You can create a new folder. Word, Excel, or PowerPoint presentation. But since you're in the cloud, what's different is I can create a OneNote notebook, which is a multiple subject notebook that's shared amongst a lot of people and with as many pages and sections as I need. I can create a form, which is a survey that's built through Excel. I have access to Visio drawings where I can graphically establish some communication measures. I can also add links since it's in the cloud. 
I also have the ability to upload. I can upload files or folders. But again, since we're in the cloud, I can take a document that is somewhere and I can also drag it. And when I drag it, it is uploading, giving you the information, and it is showing that it's here. Syncing would be if you want to sync it with your computer if it's not already syncing. And then what's awesome about being in the cloud is you also have the ability to have automations. We'll talk about this one another time because it's a little more advanced, but using Power Automate, we can create flows that can create automations with our documents. Something where if we add a document, it can email it to somebody, or if we have a document that's shared, it'll automatically send me an update when they edit it. Those are different automations that help with your workflow that are built right into the cloud. And just by clicking on that, it'll take you to Power Automate, allowing you to create those flows. Many templates are available. From OneDrive also, we have the nine dot menu up here as well. So if you wanna get back to where you were or to another location in Microsoft 365, when I click up here, it gives me the apps and the locations where I can go. It also shows me my documents I was working on. And I can click on all apps if I wanna see all the apps I have available to me. And if I click Office, it takes me right back to that main Microsoft 365 page. So that way I keep that as a central hub for my activities and my workflow. Now, if I want to open it regularly, I can just click on it or use the three dot menu to open it. If I click on it regularly, it's going to use the default method, which is in the browser. You see it's opening Word and I can edit it right in the cloud. And here you see the header for our OneDrive basics, along with my contact information, if you need to follow up with any more information. And it's browser based, so any changes I make are automatically saved. Again, webinar contact information. I can click on that, edit it correctly. It's been changed, it's saved. So now if I come back over here, this will update once those sync, just like that. If I need to rename a document, I can just highlight it and rename it. I don't want to rename that because it's desktop, but say from like here, sample data. I take that three dot menu. If I look, I have rename as an option and I can change that right there. So I don't need to take it anywhere else or do anything else with it. I can rename it right from the source. Similarly, from Windows Explorer, we see it's updated already. It's already sank down. So as soon as I updated it here, it came down to my computer. Presentation, if I right click on it in Windows Explorer and I do rename, I can say presentation two, click on it so that it updates. Now it is presentation two. It is syncing back up into the cloud. And as soon as it has an opportunity to sync and update, this will now become presentation two. And I can force it by, oh, there it is, presentation two, just like that. So it has a great linking mechanism between cloud and computer, but there's more you can do in the cloud because of the nature of it. And it syncs and automates and all of the sharing features with other people are all based in cloud functionality. So that's the benefit of using the cloud. And OneDrive makes these documents secure to my account. Somebody can't just find this information unless I share it with them. And if I think that it's been compromised, 
I can make sure that I didn't actually share it with them because it would show that. And I can also check. Again, manage access. Did I share it with anybody? If I didn't, if it's something that's just isolated to me, it's pretty secure inside my OneDrive. So those are the benefits of OneDrive for your use and many of the things you can do with it. Again, for more information, or if you have follow-up questions, here's my contact information. Our webinar is being recorded and I will share it with you as soon as we are completed. Thank you for your time today. Hopefully you've learned a little bit more about OneDrive, some of the basic features with OneDrive, but how it can increase your workflow and the security that helps with your day-to-day -day operations. Thank you.